So today we're going to talk about how to build relationship with agents and how many agents you have to build relationship with to get consistent close of deals. However, before we move on to this topic, I would like to do a quick recap about the previous topic, shall we? Uh, in the last session, we talked about the benefits and the risks of assisted property sales. Uh, I, I don't know if any one of you remember about the, um, the benefits of, for example, assisted property sales. So I'm going to do a quick recap about the benefits and risks of assisted property sales before moving to the topic of how to build relationship with agents. Okay. So in terms of benefits, we have a couple of benefits and also we have some risks when it comes to dealing with vendors. There are risks and benefits for both parts. So for the investors, there are risks and benefits. And also for the vendor, there are risks and benefits. We talked about that last week. So if you want to go back to the recording, you can watch this. However, I'm just going to repeat briefly in terms of the risks and the benefits for the investors. For example, uh, benefits for the investors, I've got no CGT. CGT stands for capital gain tax, which means every time you sell a property, you have to pay, you have to pay tax. However, with uh, this strategy, which is property assisted sales, you don't pay any tax because you're not, you're not going to sell the property, okay? You are just assisting the landlord to sell the property. And also, no SD uh, LT tax, which means no stamp duty tax, okay? You don't pay any tax, stamp duty tax as well, with this strategy, which is a great strategy because you're not paying any tax. And also, no estate agent fees, another great benefit uh, in terms of the investor. And also, no deposit. You don't have to by any deposit. However, you might have to pay, as I said, if you are controlling this strategy with a lease option, okay, you might have to pay a lease option fee, which sometimes is not cheap according to the strategy, because if you are controlling a hotel, this option fee can be 10,000 pounds or even more, or even 30, 50, depends, I don't know, uh, if the hotel is very small. Uh, however, if it's like a massive, like commercial as well building, you're going to be paying massive fee in terms of um, this strategy. So that's the uh, the benefits. In terms of the risks, we have, for example, we have delays. Uh, as you know, uh, if you don't find a buyer in the time you negotiated with the vendor, you're going to experience some delays. Of course, if you're going to experience some delays, of course, you're going to have less profit uh, because you're going to fail to complete on time. Okay, that's a massive problem. And also, you may experience unpredictable issues. When I talk about issues, I'm talking about things like sudden death, divorce, critical illness, and so on. So all these factors, they may actually delay the project, okay? And also note, how do you mitigate these risks? We talked about last week, I don't know if you remember. Uh, if you want to go back to this, you can always recap. Of course, I talk about one way is to use clauses in which you can extend the lease, okay? And let's talk about the vendor. So what about the vendor? I should ask you these guys. In terms of risk, what, what do you think is uh, other risks in terms of for the vendor? Who wants to interact? Um, sometimes, um, one or two, at the end of the lease, the uh, investor may not make good their promise and the um, vendor may feel that they're back to square one. And then secondly, if the investor takes over the property but doesn't pay the monthly payment, then that's another risk to the um, investor. Oh, sorry, vendor. Yes, thank you, Sarah, for the engagement. Um, yes, and we uh, last week we talked about one way to mitigate these risks there is, of course, by using clauses and also having a service solicitors who knows about how to put the contract together so you can mitigate and minimize the, all the risks involved, yes. So thank you so much for that, Sarah. In terms of the benefits, of course, the vendor, when you um, the investor is taking over this uh, property, he is going to sell the property quickly and move on with their lives. They don't have to experience any more hassle or, or delays. If the investor completes on, on time, of course. Uh, full asking price, uh, yes, sometimes if it's me who is controlling the property, and I'm working with a sourcer. I can even sometimes I would be able to offer a bit more than 
over the asking price if it's a great return on investment. So I will be looking forward to control this property like HMO with a lease option contract. Okay, so I can offer over the asking price. So definitely it's a great benefit for the, for the vendor and also for the sourcer because they're going to get extra, an extra commission, okay? They also get a guaranteed sales agreed. Of course, you know, when you exchange uh, contracts for the vendor, when you sign the head of terms, officially you are, you are exchanging with them. So they believe their property are going to be sold. You need to make sure you have this head of terms. If you don't have it, I can send it to you by email. Make sure you send, send me your email and I will email to you the, the head of terms. I send it to uh, Mel. Uh, it's very useful. That's the one I've been using for all these years, okay? So make sure you send me your email. I don't think I have all your emails. Uh, also, another great benefit is stress and pressure relieved. So no more stress, no more pressure. And what can I say? Great benefit for the vendor. Now, in terms of the risks, I've got uh, delays. Of course, we, we just covered that anyway. Uh, not good for the, um, for the vendor because, uh, you know, if... If uh, there is not a suitable buyer, it's going to take ages. And of course, the landlord, sometimes they have to pay more bills. They have to pay insurance. They have to pay, you know, the, the mortgage and all these factors. They're going to add to the expenses to the landlord and also a lot of stress, a lot of pain. And also, you know, uh, due to the refurbishment, sometimes uh, if it's not done on time, of course, more stress and, of course, more trouble to the, um, the landlord. So it's very important to make sure you put strategies in place to mitigate this risk, guys, yeah, I'm talking about make sure you have closes and a service solicitor. So if you want to do this for yourself or if you are working with an investor like myself, you need to make sure you know what you're doing for sure. If you're not sure what you're doing, you won't convey trust. Uh, investors won't like you. Um, state agents won't like you. So you need to make sure you know exactly the process, you know how it works. Okay, very important. Any question before we move on? Uh, Mel, uh, Will? Any questions? Oh, shall we move on? Sorry, sorry, I was on mute. I see no, no question. It's quite clear. Yeah. No question. So everything clear? Yes. Yes, guys. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah everything's clear. Okay. Thank you so much for the engagement. I have a question. Yes. Yes. Please. Who pays the insurance? The house insurance. The, um, insurance. Listen, I, I'm I'm very happy. To... The option. Yes. I'm. Uh, so when I took over, well, is the investor? It can be the investor. The pens. Uh, I give an example. When when I took over the the two houses in uh, Doncaster back then in 2015, I was very mm. happy to pay the insurance. It was with Learn Direct, uh, Sarah. Yes, it's Sarah. Yes. So uh, I was very happy because the deal was good, to be honest, and it, uh, it was nearly 300 pounds back then. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, I took it. But however, as I said, you know, I did a lot of things wrong. Uh, th that was my first two properties I managed to to control, if you like, in in UK. Um, so bef uh, coming from Portugal, in less than two years, I managed to get these two properties. So I was new to the property investment. I did a lot of mistakes. But so Sarah, answer your questions. I can pay the insurance. Uh, it depends. It depends, again, because it depends on the deal, you know, uh, on the return on investments. In the if, the, if the fender give me more time, let's say seven years or even more to exchange, officially, you know, to be legally binding. I would pay all the bills. I don't even mind because I can pay insurance. I, pay, I can pay a mortgage arrears. I don't mind. As long as he gives me more time to complete and for the location to, to go up in value, I don't really mind to pay. But again, not all investors, they would be happy to pay the insurance. The investors try to pay as less as possible, including some investors don't like to pay uh, mortgage arrears. So it depends. I'm okay with that, uh, Sarah. Is that clear? Yes. Yes, uh, and my yes, thank you very much. And I've just got one more question. The ones you bought in Doncaster, two, yes, two. Sorry, the two you bought in Doncaster. What would you have done differently now with all the knowledge and experience you have? Thank you. That's a great question. What of the the due diligence, Sarah? The the answer is due diligence. You know, to oh. be honest, that area. You know, I bought there. There are a lot of people from Romania and a lot of people on low income. Um, you know, unfortunately, the, the income wasn't there. Uh, in the beginning, uh, the income was good, 300 pounds. And then the people stopped paying the, um, the rent. And of course, you know, uh, all these section 24, all these rules, you know, I didn't know much about that back then in 2015. So um, I had some problem with the agent who was uh, managing the property and also with the tenants. And 
you know, so what I would do different, I would definitely make sure I do my due diligence. I would make sure um, the area of Doncaster, you know, it was a bit rough. I wouldn't get that area. I would go close to the center because that part was a bit far away with a lot of uh, people from Romania. So I would definitely get in, uh, the properties close to the Doncaster, the center. Definitely, yes. Uh, that's, that's what I would do different, yes. Yes, so shall we move on, yes? Thank you. Yes, you're welcome. So, uh, so how do you build relationship with agents? And how many agents you have to build relationship with to get consistent flow of income? Or if you like, source of deals, because the more deals you have, the more source of income you're going to get. So um, shall I move on? Or sh does anybody have an idea about how to uh, build relationship with the uh, state agents? Anything? I think they need to, um, you need to introduce yourself personally. Um and it and explain your um intentions clearly to them so that there's no confusion um and i think that um persistence as well um helps that they see that you're genuinely wanting to um engage and you know take take properties off their hands and that you're you're trustworthy Yes, thank you. I agree with that, Mel. Thank you so much for the engagement. Really appreciate it. Uh, yes, well, you you touch on one of the steps I'm going to cover in this video because I'm going to uh, cover six steps to build great relationship with agents uh, using a system that I call the CISLAF system to build relationship with agents. CISLAF. So what CISLAF stands for is a six-step system. So let's let's continue. So. Um, S stands for smaller agents. So simply is you need to make sure you only deal with smaller agents. But the question should be why? Because when you're getting started, you know, when you if you go to the bigger agents, there are a lot of competitions. So of course it's going to be more difficult for you um, to get started. And because you don't have a track record, you don't have experience. So I would really recommend you to start with smaller agents because they have they might have more deals and they're having problems to, you know. To get rid of them so i would say definitely smaller agents is the first s so what about inquire inquire means you just need to get in touch introduce yourself as mel said you know and uh, you know ask about the properties that are selling in the area the properties that are selling the area the properties that are letting the, in the area which strategy works the best uh which type of property is that um flats is that a uh, ten, uh, tenant's house. Uh, so no, we need to make sure you have a template or even like a checklist about this approach. We can talk about more about this in the questions if you like. So yeah, ask about properties. You know, the properties are selling or that the properties are renting in the area because every area is different and each area that has a different strategy that might be working. You don't want to go just to Doncaster and think oh, I'm going to do by to let because maybe by to let doesn't work in Doncaster. So maybe it works in different areas. So we need to be careful about that. So, and then we have the second S, which is the same. What I mean about same is um, every time you're contacting the state agents, you need to be the same person, the same agents. Why you want to do that? Well, what's the reason? Well, you know, we want to build a relationship with the agents. You need to, you need, you need to make sure you know the, the interests, their passions, you know, uh, because the more you find out about them, the easy is going to get the relationship. It's going to be the relationship. And then, of course, you know, you can take them to lunch. You can give them gifts. You can ask for their family, birthdays, things like that. So it's all about, as you know, property is a, is a people's business. It's about people. Okay. So, and then I've got L. L stands for lock. Now, what does it mean log, lo, to lock something? What does it mean? Any idea? Secure? Like Make you sure. mean lock as secure? Yeah, I keep it secure. More precisely, I'm talking about logging the details, uh, which means... Oh, log, L-O-G. Sorry? Log as in L-O-G, log. Log, yes, to log, to log something, yes. Uh, uh, what I mean about log, maybe it's a bit confused, is uh, just uh, using uh, any software like Google Sheets, Excel, anything to log uh -huh. all the details about the properties, about the, 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 the details of the property, the, the, the vendor, about how many years on the market, if it was sold or not, um, you know, things like that, all the details. Um, the data. 
Yes, yeah, sorry. Are you keeping the data. detailed records? Yeah, the all the records, yes. Thank you. Yeah, all the data. Uh, and then I've got A. A stands for always. What do I mean by always? Always means uh, you need to make sure you're always dealing with the vendor. Always your priority number one is to deal with the vendor. However, you don't want to remove or take off or whatever some people do. Some investors, they try to negotiate directly with the vendor. They, they try to cut off the, the, um, the state agent so they don't pay the commission. That's a massive mistake. I will never do that. You need to make sure you deal with the, the vendor uh, because you want to negotiate with the vendor. However, you need to make sure you continue communicating with the, you know, updating the vendor about what's going on. So if you're going to view the property, <laughs> yes, three times, four times. Yeah, excuse me. So can you please re-explain what is A, please? Because as I was taking notes, we were going quite fast, you know, just briefly, and then you can tell me what it is. Interrupt. Sorry, I didn't understand that, Will. I didn't understand your question. Can you explain log and always, please? Because as, as I was taking notes, like I couldn't remember everything, you know. Sorry. Uh, yeah. So, uh, okay. Oh. Yes. Sorry, Ellen, I mean, you wanted to, 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 um, to explain L and A. L and A, yes. Yes. Okay, I can do that. Thank you, Sarah. For uh, I was, yeah. So, uh, will um, the L is it, it's about you need to log the information. You need to use like Google Sheets or Excel to capture all the information, all the information about the the property. For example, the vendors, how many years the property has been on the market, uh, how many rooms. I can give you a document which is I call the viewing checklist in which you can record everything. Is that going to be free for you? Okay, everything I give you is free, guys, because you know, um, I think we need to show will. We need to uh, show we really want to uh, help people. Um, yeah, so uh, no problem. So about A is always, always. So when you are dealing with um, state agents, um, some people, they try to eliminate or try to, you know, cut off the state agents because they don't want to pay the commissions. That's a basic mistake. I, 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 that's not ethical. Uh, don't do that, please. Yes. Um, so you need to make sure, uh, what I say is, uh, don't include the state agents in the negotiation. So when you are negotiating with the, the, the vendor, don't include them because you're going to use, uh, you know, some terms, the state agents might put you off. Yeah. So don't include them. However, you need to make sure you update, you keep the state agents up to date. What's going on with the vendor, because you want to have the vendor's number because if sometimes you do two viewings, three viewings, four so you have the vendor's number. So sometimes the state agent is not aware what's going on. Okay, is that is that does does it make sense? Yes, yes, it does. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so um, and then I've got friendly. Friendly means we need to be friendly. We need to be nice. We need to be polite. We need to be consistent, and um, with in terms of approaching the state agents. You know, and there is someone sometimes called, called uh, who we call the val valuer, who, who is the state agent who does the valuation. You need to make sure you focus a lot of energy and time in these people who go to the property and they do the valuation because these are the people who have all the information about the the, the landlords, the homeowners. So you need to make sure you know more about these people. Who is the state agent in that company who does the valuation? Okay, very important. But I'm going to cover this in more details anyway. So let's go to the first S. Okay, first S. As I said, you need to deal only with smaller agents. I don't think I have to cover this again. Um, I said you you need to choose those agents who are local to you. But my question is going to be why you want to only choose local agents? Why? Because each area have its own strategy, right? Yes, that's correct. Yes. DJR has different uh, different strategies, and, and also, you uh, you know the, uh, you don't want an area very fair because you have to go and travel, and the more you travel, the more you more expenses you have. Okay, okay, you have to travel far away. You have to pay more money. So if you focus in the locals, uh, maybe I would say fifty minutes from where you live, not very far. Um, yes, um, you need to be careful about that. And also, I would say visit as many agents as you can. This is a numbers game. Property is a numbers game. It's about the more properties you go and view, 
the more chances you have. Tomorrow, uh, next week on Monday, tomorrow, actually tomorrow, I have a viewing, um, and on on uh, Thursday I have another viewing in the evening. So um, yeah, just keep going, and the deal will definitely come for sure. Okay, so smaller agents only. Okay, what about inquire? I said inquire is about calling the state agents. Now here you know you don't want to deal only with the state agents. Okay, guys, you also want to deal with the letting agents. When you deal with the state agents. You're going to tell them, for example, you're going to tell them that you are a deal source of sourcing deals for an investor, okay? Um, but this is for deals who are, for example, below market value. However, if you want to uh, approach deals with, like, uh, if you want, like, lease option deals in which the investor is, is, um, is willing to offer the full asking price or over, so this, you have to approach sometimes also letting agents because these people sometimes, they have properties that are letting and they want to sell. So they want to sell the property, but because the property is not selling, so they are letting the property. So when you're dealing with state agents, you want to ask them, do you have any property that is for uh, sale, but is also uh, for rent at the moment? So, because as I said, sometimes this property, they cannot sell the property. And in the meantime, they have to let the property so they can cover the mortgage and the other expenses. So make sure we, Think about that, yes. You are looking for properties that are for rent and sell. Uh, investors will rent as long as he has the option to buy in the future. Okay, so once you find one of these properties, I'll be very happy to, to buy good fee if you have even longer, seven, seven years or more, uh, you have the option to, you have a house with the rent, with rent with the option to purchase or to buy in the future. Okay, any question about this or shall we move on? That's fine. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So thank you, uh, everybody. So same. We cover same. I'm just gonna go into more details about each point, each step, because these are six steps. Uh, at the moment, I'm covering step number three, which is same. As I said, we need to make sure we we're talking with the same agent all the time. There is no point. Uh, you go to the agent today, you speak with someone, and then tomorrow you go or next week you go and speak with a different person. There is no point, guys. We need to be consistent. Make sure we build one relationship with the same person. And also, I would recommend you to go on social media and look for that state agent. For example, if you go on LinkedIn, you sometimes they are, they are on LinkedIn. I find many, many on LinkedIn in which I connect with them and I find out their interest, what they are doing, which properties they are trying to sell. And I approach them, I send them a message. And, you know, I need to be, that's a one very good way to keep in touch with the state agents or even letting agents, okay? So make sure you talk always with the same agent. And also make sure you know who is the state agent who does the valuation, as I said, because this is a person who has all the data, all the information about why the property is not selling, um, uh, how long the property has been on the market. So we need to be very careful about this, okay? Um and I said, get all the details. Yes, it's very important that you get all the details, if possible, about the property. The, you know, for example, not just the property, I'm talking about the state agents, their interests, their passions, you know, their, their kids' birthday. And, uh, you know, it's good if you can take them gifts sometimes, you know, uh, see what they like, uh, take them for dinner or for, you know. And for example, if you exchange on a deal, make sure you go and celebrate and pay them good commissions. Remember, we need to pay well, okay? Let's continue. And then lock, lock. We need to lock all the information, okay? Or as I said, all the information, use any tool you have available, whichever is easy for you. I said Google Sheet because it's easier for me, but you can use uh, anything that's as long as it works for you. And I said, guys, the money is in the follow-up. You know, we need to follow up every two weeks. Just because the property was sold, as they say, subject to contract, it doesn't mean that it will be sold. You know, in a, one in three properties, is the check from trade is now is out um, in the market again. I don't know if you understand what I mean. So um, one in three properties fail to sell. So we need to make sure we follow up every two weeks. You can follow up by calling. You can follow up by actually going there and speaking. Uh, we, you can call the, the, the vendor, you have the, his detail. You can go and call the state agents. Don't be ashamed to say, oh, I'm being annoyed. Uh, what is going to risk uh, the state agent or the owner is going to think about me? Don't be ashamed to call. It's a numbers game. The more you call, the more you go, the more you show up, the more chances you have to make a deal, okay? 
Uh, and I said, track everything. You know, tracking is very important. Uh, no tracking means no deals. And actually, I was reading a book called uh, OKR, which is a... Uh, is about tracking everything. Google, for example, they track everything, all the details. No wonder they, they are growing up very fast. Um, as I said, track subject to contract. STC is very important. So make sure you also track this STC. You know, every time the, the state agents tell you, oh, the property has been sold, is uh, at the moment is STC. Guys, after two weeks, follow up. And then after two weeks, follow up until it's completely sold and it's completely taken from the state agent's books. But you never know, even though Maybe it's going to be taken and it's going to come back again. So make sure you keep in touch with the state agents and with the, the vendor. Okay, very important. Uh, always, always, I said, always include, as I said, always include the state agents. Don't try to cut them off, you know, pay them commission, be fair, be nice, be polite. Um, uh, I said, but never include the state agents in the negotiation, never. And I said, never, never try to cut them off. I already talked about that. Um, guys, friendly, very important, you know, we need to be very friendly, very polite with the state agents and the person who is going to be the value. We know we need to be the best we can be because this is a property. Property is a business of people. Yeah. So um, I, one thing I said is be honest. Always tell them who you are or your investor. If you are a sourcer, tell them you are you have investors and um, who are interested in buying. Be honest with them. Don't try to lie. You know, don't try to be other person. Don't try to be who you're not. Be yourself because everybody else is taken, as they say. Okay. Uh, be confident. Guys, confident is everything. Now, you may think I'm very confident. I can guarantee you I wasn't because when I was nearly seven, I couldn't speak. I couldn't write. I couldn't read. I wasn't confident. I was shy. Um, however, I managed to, to make it. If I can do it, you can do it too. Okay. It's not impossible. I'm not smarter than you. I'm not better than you. Okay. Nobody is. I'm not more intelligent than you either. So you need to make sure you buy as soon as possible. Now, you need to make sure you buy or you invest as soon as possible because when you sign the head of terms, I believe the, the deal is sold. So you need to make sure you move fast, do whatever it takes so the deal is actually gone because otherwise you will never see the, 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 sorry, the vendor or the state agent again, okay? We need to be professional. We need to be... Fast. That's the keyword. Um, this is a test. We only have five minutes left. Let's do the test. Who wants to tell me the step one? Quickly, we can unmute, unmute everybody. This now is the first beat, and then we're gonna go, go to a second part. What's the stands for? Sorry, is it possible if is it, is it possible if I ask questions before we carry on? Uh, questions. We we are the end. We we'll, we reach the end of the beat when we only have five minutes. Um. Yes, we have five minutes. The questions, uh, I have another question to ask you. Uh, we have the recording. You can ask me anything if you want. You can call me or also you can uh, send me a text. Uh, the, the time is very limited because of the, we have only have 45 minutes. Um, so uh, now I'm asking you, Willu, so what is the first S of this system? Do you remember? Smaller yeah, agent. Exactly, the smaller agent. Maybe. Well done, smaller agent. Sarah, thank you. What about E? What about E, guys? E is about... Um... I'm checking your knowledge, yes. Checking your knowledge. Inquiry, ask. Well done, inquire about the properties. Well done. Uh, Mel, what about S, the second S, Mel? Any idea? I forgot, and I, I know what L is. <laughs> no worries, no worries. We are here to uh, Will. Any oh, ideas? Can you help? Uh, speak to the same agent. Keep speaking to the same agent. Keep the speaking. Same person. Any idea? Yes. Uh, let's 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 go. Let's see. Any same. Idea? Same. Well done. Same. Keep same. Keeps uh, talking with the same agents. Well done. Uh, what about uh, L? Log. Log, well done. Log. Log that you keep a, a well done, guys. Well done. You are here. You are here for sure. Log all the details using Google Sheets. What about A? Will. Exactly. That's the question that I had. The A is to always negotiate with the with the with the landlord, right? Rather than the agent. But how to do that? Like, do, can you ask the agent to to do that, or you have to do it by your own? Because this is this is the question that I wanted to ask you later. You know. No, you you need to you need the state agent is the gateway. He's in the middle. 
who is going to be the gateway to the, uh, in the beginning you deal with, if you're dealing with the state agents, uh, first, they're going to give you the key to the, to the landlord. However, your, your purpose number one is to, to negotiate with the landlord, okay? But sometimes you don't have to get, deal with the state agents. You can go direct to the uh, landlord if you use like things like uh, like open rents or the platforms. You don't have to do that, okay? So A is, yes, always deal with the vendor. That's the priority and, you know, and what about F? Everything friendly. friendly. Friendly, friendly, be polite. Uh, well done, guys. You you spot it. A small agents, inquiry about the, the market. I can give you this poor PowerPoint so if you like. I can give you all the resources, the PowerPoints. You have access to recordings. Uh, so we have more. We have same. We have log, record all the details. Always include agents when dealing with the vendor, not in the negotiation. Friendly. Uh, I said, be friendly, more importantly, buy the deals. The most important step of all these guys, the most important part is the last step. You need to buy the deal. You need to be friendly, but you need to buy the deal or your investor need to make sure they buy the deal. Otherwise, you're going to lose the, the, the state agents, okay? Uh, so in terms of these questions, how many agents you have to build a relationship with to get consistent flow of income or deals, if you like? How many agents? I would tell as many you, as, you can. as many, well done, Sarah, as many as you can. That's the correct answer, Will. As many as you can. Remember, this is a numbers game. Property is a numbers game. The more you put yourself out there, the more chances you have to complete your first deal that is going to help you to achieve financial freedom, okay? So, and I do recommend you to follow this, uh, the Seslav system to build a relationship with agents. Guys, any questions quickly? We have one minute and a half. Uh, thank you so much. Any question before we go? I will give you the recording. I will give you the PowerPoint if you like. Uh, yes. Who wants the recording? By the, uh, who wants the PowerPoint? By the way. But the thing is, I have a question. Uh, if yeah, I go to the state, that said that I am a sponsor, would they, would they, would they, would this affect the likelihood of them working with me instead of of me saying that I am an investor? Because some agents they have a bad image of. Sponsoring, you understand? Or maybe should I reassure them and say that I work with thousands of investors? Because in my opinion, many people say that if you say that you're a sorcerer, most of them they don't they don't even want to talk to you, you know. So what is your opinion about it? Okay, well, I didn't fully get that. We have a few seconds left. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm going to answer this or in the next video. However, I'm gonna call you and you're gonna explain to me, okay? Okay. No no, wait, what do you want to call me now or tomorrow? No, no, right now, yes, after the, this. So, thank you so much. It was a pleasure having you. Uh, I can give you the PowerPoint and also the recordings. See you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, bye. Bye for now. Bye.